Hey guys, 47 here. Today's video is my gripes and complaints about Overwatch. Uh, what to do and what not to do. What you kind of see in ranked, where things go wrong, why you end up in a bad ranking. Uh, before I get into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to Acquire. Uh, they made this amazing hat, stitched in quality. Uh, they made the In Control t-shirt for me. Uh, great company. They said earlier one of the shirts got damaged. They took the time. Their support emailed me on Twitter and let me know that it was coming in a little late. So give them a shout. Use code Barricade and uh, get 5% off of your purchases. All right, guys, here we go. All right, guys, what I normally see in ranked games at a low elo. Uh, first of all, let me say that I've been solo queuing, and it is possible to solo queue to a high rank, but unless you have a duo or a trio that you can kind of communicate with each other, things get a little more difficult. What I see at lower ranks is basically just a lack of communication uh, when people are playing. Nobody calls out. You have insta-locks. Uh, nobody really talks about who's where in the game and what's going on. Um, but we'll get all into that in a minute. The basic composition of Overwatch is two tanks, two healers, and then whoever you need from there on out, depending on defense or offense, whatever map you're playing, so on and so forth. Now, it is always best to try and play a character that you're best with, so that kind of throws everything out the window. If you're really good with a player that doesn't necessarily fit the meta, but you can do some severe damage with that character, like that just depends on your team and how they're willing to form around you. But a lot of times what you see is people will just get into a lobby, insta-lock a bastion, and call it a day. Okay? So when you get to that first window, you really need to talk about... Uh what you're going to do in the beginning of the game. Um, ask people what they're going to go. It's it's always important to learn how to play a flex role. And that means you should, you should already know how to play all the characters. Or have a pretty good understanding of how all the characters work. Okay? So, you know, if you want to play a Hanzo, there's certain matchups he's not really good with. You know... There's a Reinhardt Zarya combo. You know, there's times you pick Mercy. There's times you pick Anna, depending on what characters you want to pick. And there's plenty of websites that you can look at that will show you what compositions go with what. But the main thing to take away from this is don't get into a lobby and insta lock, because it really does kind of only take one or two people who aren't playing into their composition to ruin an entire game. Um. And it really doesn't make it fun for anyone, and then everyone starts raging and all that stuff. So so the do's and don'ts, you, you do want to communicate. You do want to pick into your team or talk to your team beforehand using the chat. Don't just insta-lock. <laughs> Don't, you know, join the game, like I said. Don't auto-lock Bastion or Hanzo or Mei and just say, okay, guys, play around me. Kind of figure out what everybody wants to go and play into their their skills, okay? The second thing I see a lot in ranked is people playing McCree or Genji or Mei or... Ah, uh, Mei's kind of a hit or miss. Not in the back lines. You, you don't play them as tanks. Just because McCree has a stun doesn't mean that you can roll up as a tank and just hope to kill, alright? You're gonna die. The point of McCree, the point of Reaper, the point of many other champions at that level is to flank. Okay, Farron and McCree usually stand in the back and help the offensive push, whereas people like Genji and Tracer, Reaper, they're, they're called your flanks. Your job is to get behind the line and take out, you know, the healers and the squishies and anyone that's going to be an annoyance to your team. A lot of times... I see people playing McCree, they're, they're up front with the tank, they're standing on the payload, it just it doesn't make for a good, unless you're the last one up, it doesn't really make for a good uh, attack strategy. The next thing I see in ranked a ton, and this is very, very, very important, and this loses more games than anything I've ever encountered before, even worse than Team Cop, is 
using your ultimates and going in at the same time. How many times have you guys been in a rank game where people are just going in one at a time and just staggering all your deaths? You never have a full team push, okay? Especially on a control point, like, yeah, you're going to lose a percentage. Like, their, their timer is going to tick. Like, they're going to go up, like, 20%. But you still get a couple shots as a full team to take control of the point. Save your alts for team fights. So many times I see people just blowing a Zarya ult or blowing a Pharah ult on absolutely nothing. If you put those two together, it's amazing. If you put Zarya and Reaper together, it is absolutely amazing. If you put an Anna Reinhardt or Anna Reaper together, it is absolutely amazing. So you want to pay attention to the little, you know, it's a little blue check mark. And, and talk to your team. Ask them, say, are you ready to go in? Like, I'm going to go in off your alt. Like, hey, guys, let's do this. A lot of times people aren't going to talk back, but they hear you. Or they'll type something. Um, enough with fucking Symmetra, people. She's getting a rework, so it really doesn't matter at this point on the PTR. But enough with Symmetra. Okay? Hollywood and Temple of Anubis. That's it. Defense only. Stop. Stop playing Symmetra. Just all together. Just stop. Stop playing Bastion. He's good on a couple payload maps. Stop playing Bastion. Just stop. Stop. Just stop. Um, another thing that you should probably consider uh, in where most teams fail is payload. It's very important to play the payload. A lot of times you'll see people leave the payload to chase. And I've seen games lost when they could be won. Uh, because someone goes to chase someone off the payload and gets baited into that. So always have somebody standing on the payload. It doesn't matter who it is. I mean, it kind of does. But it really doesn't matter who it is. One person should always be on the payload at all times. You play the payload like you play the control point. You always stand on it the best you can. Um, as far as anything outstanding outside of that i mean it's really just don't rage uh raging makes your team it just frustrates everybody you know again play the character you're best at learn to use your cc another thing i see is they give you hero change for a reason and that reason is when you come up against the team comp and you see what they have, you can counter. If they're not tank heavy, chances are you're really not going to need a Reaper. If they're kind of squishy, a McCree will work, a Genji will work. Um, you know, Genji's good against Torbjorn and a Bastion. Genji's actually just kind of good at controlling a point like Tracer is. But you can switch. Don't do it too often because you lose your alt status. But you can switch. When you first come into that team encounter and you fail miserably... Take a look at what happened, take a look at who they are, and re-pick your champs accordingly. That is a completely legit thing, and I, and I see it in low ranks. People yell, ah, oh, you switched your character, we've lost all our alts. It's not true. I mean, losing the alt is true, but it's smarter to pick into a team you can win against. That way you weren't screwed in the long run. The last thing I want to talk about is control points. Um, control points are very flank heavy. And a lot of times in lower ranks, you'll see people just rush the, rush the point as fast as they can. Big team fight. Whoever wins the fight takes the point, and the other team will come in and try and take the point. Okay, Don't rush the control point. If you want to win, do not rush the control point. Get You got 20 or 30 seconds for it unlocks. Go in there. Get your flanks up. Get your flanks ready. Watch where people are coming from. Try and get a couple picks before the point actually opens up. And set up a good defense. Okay, The best defense, actually, the best offense is a good defense. And that stands true for some maps in control point. So don't rush the control point. Also, if you don't have a Lucio in your team, you're doing it wrong. You should always have a Lucio on your team. Always, 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 always have a Lucio on your team. And learn knockbacks. Learn who goes knockback. Learn to lane. Learn who to pick. Learn who priorities are. 
ask questions. That's that's the biggest thing. If you're in a game and somebody's ranked higher than you, ask just ask questions. A lot of people have no problems. Streamers, anybody in comp, have no problems. You know, if you ask a question, just answering it real quick. There's no there's no question that really involves a long drawn out answer. So do what you can. Do it the best you can. Talk to your team. Communicate. Pick into the champion select. Don't be afraid to reroll a champ for composition. And save your alts for team fights. Play the payload. That's like the only six rules of Overwatch there is. The n- the number like the first four rules are are play the payload. And you've seen the memes. That, that is a legit rule. And stop playing Bastion. Because if I see one more Bastion. I'm just going to straight murder a motherfucker. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was kind of unscripted. I was just kind of rambling off my head due to a couple games that I, I had seen a lot of stuff in earlier. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Follow me at Twitter, underscore 47. YouTube, obviously, you're watching. is 47 FPS. My Facebook is 47. And my Twitch.tv 47. Okay? Make sure you drop them a follow. I say MK a lot. I'm a Yankee. Shut the fuck up. Follow, subscribe. Really helps me out. And uh, I'll see you guys later.